It feels like just yesterday I was making a video about the impending release of Blender 2.9. Three whole months have passed in that time, which means that Blender 2.91 is due to be released any day. I've been using 2.91 for the last few weeks, so here's a couple of my favourite new features. First up, we have a new volume object workflow. If we go into the add menu, we have this option here to add a volume object. In the modifier panel, this object has two new options, the mesh to volume and volume displace. If we pick mesh to volume and we select this monkey head in our scene here as the target object, the volume empty will automatically take the shape of the target. It's a little bit lower resolution right now, so we can increase the density and we can increase the voxel count to get a nicer result. This is a completely procedural workflow, which means that we can alter the target mesh in edit mode and the volume will automatically update itself to match the geometry. If we go back into the modifier tab and we add volume displacement, we can create a new texture and we can use that to displace the volume. You can pick from one of the default textures or you can import your own and get some really nice volumetric results without having to run any simulations. This next feature is a total godsend to anybody who does a lot of hard surface modelling in Blender. In previous versions of Blender, the Boolean modifier had this really annoying little glitch. If you tried to cut out one object from another object and they had overlapping faces, you'd often get really unexpected results. For example, these two cubes here are at the exact same height, so if I run a different Boolean modifier on it, you'd expect the smaller cube to be cut out from the larger one. Instead, Blender, if for some reason, decides to add the result together, and it also leaves behind this really nasty looking topology. So if we switch over to Blender 2.91, we can run the exact same operation, and you'll notice that we get this new setting in the modifier stack called Fast and Exact. Exact will give you the same result that you previously get in other versions of Blender, but Exact will give you a much more accurate result most of the time. If we apply the modifier and we remove that cutout cube, you can see that we get the result we'd expect. The smaller cube has been cut out from the larger one, and we get some really nice topology compared to the nasty topology we got before. It wouldn't be a Blender update without the whole stack of new sculpting features. In truth, I could spend the whole video talking about these, but I'll try to stick to just one or two of my favourites. So in the Sculpt panel, you'll find that there's this new brush called the Boundary Brush. It allows you to bend the edges of the geometry in either direction based on the size of the brush. If you press N and you open up the tool options, you can change the mode type from Geometry to a Cloth Sim Brush. The brush has several different modes like Twist, which allows you to grab the edge of a piece of cloth and then twist it around the middle point. There's also this nice grab mode which kind of acts like you're dragging a piece of cloth over a table. Another interesting sculpting feature is the fact that sculpt brushes and mesh filters in cloth mode now respond to objects that have collision modifiers enabled. In the future apparently they're planning to add self collision to the cloth as well, which I think in a lot of cases is going to make old school cloth sims pretty much redundant, especially if you're doing something like character clothing. So no matter how well you know Blender, I think we all spend a little bit too much time hunting around the various menus trying to find particular settings. At the top of the sidebar you'll see we have this new search box that we can use to locate just about any property or setting in Blender. For instance, searching for the material here brings up the object's material slot. And if we do another search for the word wireframe, Blender shows us the option to enable wireframe draw mode in the viewport. The reason it's called a fuzzy search is because you don't have to be exact with your wording. For instance, if I deliberately mistype the word body, Blender still knows that I'm probably looking for the soft body settings page and it shows me that anyway. This next feature is something I've personally been waiting for for a long time now. Curve objects can now have custom profiles added to their shape, just like the custom bevel profiles that were added to Blender earlier in the year. You can create just about any design in the sidebar and the curve object will automatically adhere its shape to the curve that you've created. Better yet, you can also use the exact same settings on text objects, so that gives you much more control over text than you would normally get just by adding in a default font. So those were five of my favourite features coming to Blender 
which is officially due to be released on the 24th of this month, which is November. Let me know in the comments below which features you're the most looking forward to. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and thank you very much for watching.